It's this lack of integrity of the Dawa teams to engage with people who who are who, who do come with scholarly arguments and research. It's that lack of integrity that you won't engage that leads to this shouting match, that leads to this harangue. But if there was more dishonest, uh, the more honesty from the Dawa teams, more intellectual honesty, where this, where you could have said, okay, Bob, let's have a debate. Let's do five minutes, five minutes. Then it would have been a nice debate, a nice discussion. The next thing I want to talk about is your reply, your video. You made a video on your channel, Hamza. And then I want to say something to Bob. Um, on your video, you made a reply to this whole debate, and it's called. It's the same type, more or less the same title as this. You made a reply. Um, one of the things is you were attacking Soko Films a lot. You were attacking him, and I was there at the time, and all the Muslim film people, the people who were who were filming, there must have been at least four, there was more than four, they all had space to film, right? But Soko didn't have any space, he was cramped and he was looking for space and you Hamza did purposely push him. You did push him, you were aggressive to him. And I do think there is a, an attack on Sokol Films, um, a maligning of Sokol Films, an attack on Sokol Films, and it's because he's doing a good job in filming debates and discussion. And I think it's totally wrong to attack the, the, the filmmakers. He didn't have any space to film and he was looking for space rather than people moving out of the way he got pushed by you quite aggressively Hamza and in your reply on your video you spent quite a bit of time attacking Soko which I think was totally out of order and I think a lot of Muslims are attacking Soko films and it's because he's doing a good job he's actually doing a good job in filming okay so I don't think you should be attacking him I think you should leave the guy alone let him do his film, provide opportunity where he can have space to do his filming, okay? The reason why you're attacking him is because Soko Films is a threat to Islam because there's so many good videos on his channel and there's nothing better than you would like is to take Soko Films out. So I would say to Soko Films, you've got to be strong, bro, you've got to be strong in the word, strong in prayer and strong as a team because they don't like what you're doing bro and you've got to be strong mate. Keep strong and keep your team strong because the Dawa teams down there they'll do anything to get rid of you so you've got to keep strong and people need to encourage Soko films etc. Now, a couple of things about you Bob um, I think uh, you're a great debater, brother, and I think that you you you've got uh, you've got something about you, and uh, you're doing a good job in the debates, and you're doing a good job in exposing Islam. Um, but a couple of things, I think. Number one, um, the shouting. Uh, if they don't want to listen, there comes a point where you've got to. There, there comes a point when <coughs> you've got to discern when to pull back or not to pull back. That's number one. Number two, you've got to work with other brothers and sisters. I was there with you. You should have used me and worked with me in that situation. To calm things down okay you had me at your side you should have said Jay is there anything you want to say and let me say something 
And that would have calmed things down a little bit. And we could have get, begin to get into a dialogue. So number one, you, you've got to learn to calm things down. Number two, you've got to learn to work with other Christians. You had a brother by your side who loves you and is there. And number three, you've got to learn from your other brothers and sisters. You can't be a, a, someone who's a loner. You've got to learn from other brothers and sisters. And I've challenged you on uh, Genesis chapter 1 and 2. And you have to learn from that. And take it humbly and work with brothers who love you and sisters who love you and want to stand with you. Okay. So you, you was doing that totally on your own with Hamza. You asked me to read something. But if Daniel would have been there or Hatun would have been there or Godwin would have been there, they would have asked me, Jay, come in, say something. And you've got to learn to remember that you can't do it all on your own. That you need other brothers and sisters to stand with you and work with you. The other thing I want to say to Hamza is you're trying to cause division between DCCI, Bob the Builder and me. Right? As far as I'm concerned, we're all equal. We're all gifted in our different ways. The, you're saying that, Hamza, that you're not bothered about the DCI. You may bother bothered about Bob and a little bit about me. Well, Hatum has done research on 52,000 variants of the Quran. That is just studying a few Qurans, a few Qurans, right? And she's found 52,000 variants. And you as the Dawatins from Mansur to you, to all of you, have not dealt with that. And you dismiss her to you dismiss the DCI team. And it's really not right. It's really dishonest of you. And it's really not fair. We don't dismiss you. We don't dismiss. None of the Christian teams dismiss any of the, the Muslim apologists. We would debate any, I know that DCI and Bob would debate any Christian apologies, uh, any Muslim apologies. None of the Muslim apologies get dismissed. We treat them, everybody, they all are treated with respect that we're willing to engage with them. The DCI would be willing to engage with any Muslim apologies and the same with Bob. But you dismiss DCI, DCCI, and it's wrong. DCCI are doing a good job in debating concerning Islam and Christianity. And they're doing a brilliant job. They're doing just as good a job as Bob is. Daniel's doing just as good a job. Godwin, Hatum and Lizzie. They're all doing just as good a job. Okay? And they're doing a great job. And for you to say that they're done and dusted, we don't want to do them, we just want to do Bob... But Bob, you failed now miserably. I just think it's really, really disrespectful and dishonest. And as Christians, it shouldn't cause us division. As far as I'm concerned, uh, we're all equal and DCCI are doing a brilliant job. They're, they're there every week and the, the, there's some amazing debates that have gone on. Uh, and may, may, amazing exposure of Islam. Bob's doing a great job. They're all doing a great job. So, uh, Hamza's trying to cause jealousy between Christians and, and division. Well, it won't work. Okay. So that, that's just something on the table there. Now, I just want to show you something. Hamza. Those are the notes in that suitcase that I took with me to Hyde Park. That's my Bible with notes, the Quran notes, and notes, and notes, and notes. I just want to bring a few things to your attention. Now,
Now that we've got rid of the personal stuff, I just want to get on to, uh, to questions that I wanted I wanted to ask you, Hamza. Um, some of the things that I wanted to ask you was about one of the things I wanted to ask you specifically is about the Quran. You're always saying, "Oh, we're not discussing the Quran; we'll discuss the Bible." I think again, this is intellectual dishonesty by the Dawa teams and by yourself. If you're going to ask questions about the Bible, you should be willing to answer questions about the Quran. So I'm going to ask you some questions, and if you could reply to these questions in a video, I'd be very grateful if you and the doctor could make a video reply to these specific questions concerning the Quran. Because this is what I wanted to ask you. If you could be polite enough and kind enough to reply with the good doctor, your friend, to these questions, I'd be very, very grateful. And if you can't, it doesn't matter. But these are the kind of scholarly things that I was going to bring up to you in debate on is the Quran or the Bible the Word of God. Verses were written on stones, leaves and, and Camel bones and uh, camel bones, etc. Okay, that's what we read in the is uh, the hadith tradition. The question that I want to ask you, and the good doctor, is where is the evidence to show that they were written on stones and leaves? Do we have any leaves, any camel bones, or any stones? And if we don't, what? Does that make it? Does that make it real history or or, or myth? It says the seventy memorizers were killed in the Battle of Yemen in De December uh, Yemen Yemen in December six three two. I would like to know what the hadith for that is. I know what the hadith, but I'd like you to quote the hadith. But then I'd like you to show us the chain of narration concerning that that situation what is the chain of narration and is that train, chain of narration a strong narration Caliph Abu uh, in other words I want to know it, that there's no liars that that, that, it, that chain of narration is totally pure concerning that issue that 70 memorizers were killed in the battle of Yemen I want to test the historical validity of hadiths that you use Caliph Abu Bakr ordered that a full Quran be written down. Did Caliph Abu, Abu Bakr have any divine sanction for doing this? Was any prophet involved in this collection of the Quran? Zayed bin Thabit collected parts. Did, was he given any divine sanction from a prophet? One copy was given to Hafsa, one of Muhammad's wives. Was she given any divine sanction for having a Quran in her possession? Four men also were in involved in the collection of the Quran. This is in Sayyid Bukhari 5155, Sayyid Bukhari 6521. Forgive me the pronunciation, but they are Ubay bin Kab Abu al Darda, uh, Muda bin Jabal, Abu Zaid, Zayed bin Thabi. Question Do they have divine sanction from any prophet to do what they were doing? Abdullah bin Masood did not regard Surah 113 and 114 as one of the as the surahs as surahs of the Quran. In that's Abu 
a la introduction to Surah 113. He also omitted Surah 1. Could you give me arguments why this is not correct? Abu bin Masud did not regard Surahs 113 and 114 as Surahs of the Quran and even Surah 1. Can you substantiate that this is not true or true whichever position you take? Abu Musad al-Shari are two extra chapters called Al-Kali and Al-Hafal, I think, 116 Surah. Uban bin Kayyab combined chapters 105 and 106 making 115 chapters according to al Suyati, page 427. Do you agree with this or do you disagree with this? Within 20 years of the death of Muhammad, there were four major places of where there were different Qurans. In Damascus, we have 115 chapters by Uban bin Kabi. Um, we have Abdullah ibn Masud, Kufa, 111 chapters. So Damascus, Kufa, one and Kufa, one eleven chapters. Abu Musa al Shari in Basra, one sixteen chapters. Zayed bin Thabit Medina, one fourteen chapters. Do you agree with this or do you disagree with this? Can you give any evidence to substantiate that this is not true? So we have a Muslim scholar, Professor Animari Shim, uh, Shimil said, she's a woman who converted to, converted to Islam, said no original Quran text has survived, has survived. That's in her book, Calligraphy and Islamic Culture, New York University Press, 1984, page 4. Do you agree with her or disagree with her? Professor Anne-Marie Shimon, a convert to Islam, said, No original Quranic text has survived. That's in her book, Calligraphy, Islamic Culture, New York University Press, 1984. Do you agree with that or disagree with that? Looking at the ancient Quranic manuscripts in Quran 2, chapter 2, 137. So we're looking now at manuscripts, ancient manuscripts like Top Copy, the Cairo manuscript, the Sana Musaf al Sharif, uh, the Sana manuscripts, and the Istanbul and the St. Petersburg. So now we're just looking at a few of the ancient Qurans. In the Quran, ancient Quran, in the Biblica National de France, Arab 331, this is an ancient Quran, in uh, chapter 2, verse 1, 137. We have a difference between uh, Bithil, Bithili and similarity inserted by extra dots that's in chapter 2 verse 1 to 37 in the top copy manuscript chapter 3 verse 47 we have a later insertion a 15th century added what he wills so we have a 15th century copy of the top copy which is an older copy and the insertion what he wills was put in do you agree with that or disagree and if you if this is true, then the Quran has been corrupted. Erasure of text in Quran fifteen twenty four 
56 of verse 11, the manuscript of the Bi uh, Bibliothèque Nationale de France, Arab 331, uh, those they are rubbed and they rubbed out. So they was rubbed out of the text. Answer the question. When were the dots added in the Quran? And if the dots were added in the Quran, how are they the inspired word of God? The dots in the grammar. Okay. Now we're going to different versions of the Quran. The Hass version, in chapter 2, verse 1, uh, 40. It says, or do say, or do you say that? In the wash version, it says, or do they say that? So it's, you say that, they say that. That's in 2.140. The Hash Quran version, in 2, chapter 2, verse 21.9. It says, in them is big sin. In the Dury version, in chapter 2, 2, 1, 9, it says, a lot of sin. So, could you comment, Amza, on the textual variants? In Hass version, in chapter 2, verse, chapter 2, uh, Quran, chapter 2, verse 2, 7, 1, it says, he will expatiate. In the Al Susi version of the Quran, in chapter 2, 271, it says, We will expatiate. So it says, He will expatiate in the Hafs. In the Al Zuri version, it says, Will expatiate. In each of the Quranic Qurans, like the Duri and the Hafs, there are 5,000 vowel making differences per version. This has been checked by Arabic scholars. Could you commentate on that? Could you debunk it? Not by saying, well, give us your proof. I've just given you some evidence. I can give you uh, where this comes from if you want it. But can you challenge that? And there are 100 to 150 consonantal differences per version of the Quran. When Uthman burnt the Quran and there was arguments about the seven different ways of reading, what is the orthodox way of the seven ways of reading? Because nobody can agree on it as far as we can see. But what do you say about that? The Birmingham Quran, we have only two pages. The carbon dated from 568 to 645 AD. Probably 95% accuracy. But it only dates the skin. But if we take the carbon dating of the skin it seems that Muhammad uh, it seems that some of the Quran that was written was predated before Muhammad could you comment on the Birmingham Quran and how that fits in with your narrative So in 1972 we found over 100,000 ancient Qurans called the Sinai Manuscripts, Codex Sinai Manuscript. Some of these Qurans are palmists washed and written over. Over 73% of the text has been added. Could you comment on the Sinai Manuscripts? and this issue of washing over the Qurans 
and add into the Qur'ans. Could you comment on the burning of the Qur'an by Uthman? Why would you burn the Qur'an? What's the evidence for, for this and why, why, why was it conducted? In 1924, the Egyptian government sunk a ship concerning Qur'ans. Could you give us information of why this is? Because it seems like it was a cover-up. They were trying to make a new Qur'an. It didn't work out, so they, they got rid of these Qur'ans. But could you give us information about this cover-up, so-called? Here are more pages and pages of textual variants of the Qur'an. Hass and Dori, etc. But I won't go into them. I've given you enough questions for you, Hamza, and your uh, doctor friend to look into uh, concerning um, concerning the Quran. Answer these questions. Grapple with these questions. If the Quran came down from heaven, where's the sticks and stones? If the Quran came down from heaven, why in those thousands of one thousand uh, palm uh, thousand manuscripts of the Quran um, the sound of manuscripts why was this washing over and adding to the Quran what's that all about and all the questions that I've asked about the Quran there are a lot of questions there that are critical questions that you need to you need to answer so that, that, that's my first block of information that I wanted to throw at you. I wanted to throw these questions out at you in a debate on is the Quran and the Bible the Word of God. Second thing I wanted to ask you is how do you deal with the question about who wrote the Gospels? You're often attacking the Gospels. Um, Bart Ehrman says some books such as the Gospels have been written anonymously only later to, to be ascribed certain authors who probably did not write them, apostles and friends of apostles. Well, um, if you look into uh, the inscriptions, the inscriptions were always there. Now, the inscriptions uh, throughout history, if you look at the, uh, the Alexandrian and the Vaticanus text, you know, the inscriptions grow by size, the Gospel of Matthew, then it grows gospel according to Matthew. But the inscriptions were always there. So, Augustine says, Why does no one doubt the genuineness of the book attribute, attributed to Hippocrates? Hippocrates. Hippocrates. Because there, it says St. Augustine, there is... A succession of testimonies to the book from the time of Hippocrates to the present day, which makes it unreasonable either now or, or hereafter to have any doubt on the subject. How do we know the authorship of the works of Plato, Aristotle, Cicero, Varro and other writers, but by the unbroken chain of evidence, Augustus against Faustus? 400. Early attestation of the Gospels, Tertullian of Carthage, 207, Clement of Alexandria, 180. Irenaeus of Lyons, 180, Moratorium Fragment, 170, Justin Martyr, 150, and Papias Heropolis, 125. This information can be found, Who Wrote the Gospels, by Dr. Timothy McGrew, uh, St. Michael's Lutheran Church, January 23, 2012. That's the information for this. The evidence of Tertullian, 207. The Gospels were written by Matthew and John who were apostles, and Luke and Mark, who were apostolic men. Mark's gospel is the record of Peter's preaching. They tell the same basic facts about Jesus, including his virgin birth and his fulfilment of prophecy. The evidence of uh, uh, Clement of Alexandria, 180. Mark wrote his gospel by request from his knowledge of Peter preaching at Rome. Matthew and Luke were published first. They are the gospels containing the genealogies. John's Gospel was the last one to appear. It was written at the urging of his friends. The evidence of Irenaeus of Laons, 180. Matthew's Gospel was the first one written. It was originally written in the Hebrew dialect. Mark, a disciple of Peter, handed down in his Gospel what Peter had preached. Luke, a companion of Paul, 
recorded in a book, the Gospel preached by him, and John, the disciple of the Lord, published the Gospel while living at Ephesus in Asia. That's Irenaeus of Laoyans. The Moratorium Fragment 170, the early part of this text is lost, but virtually all scholars agree. Refer to Matthew and Mark, Luke the physician, companion of Paul, wrote his gospel from the reports of others since he had not personally seen Jesus. And John, who was an eyewitness, wrote his gospel after the rest at the urging of his friends. The evidence of Justin Martyr, 150. The Christians possessed memoirs of Jesus, which were also called gospels. These were written by apostles and by those who were their followers. They tell us of such events as the visit of the Magi, at Jesus' birth and his agony in Gethsemane. The evidence of Papias, 125. Mark, having been the interpreter of Peter, wrote down what Peter had preached accurately, though not necessarily in order. Matthew wrote oracles, 